Oh, your line hit mine. Cheap throw. Still yeah. hitting it? Yeah. Looking for the magic spot. The tarpon season brings out everybody, doesn't it? Yeah, yes, sir. There are people you always got to pay attention to, and the keys are real special for it. <laughs> well, if y'all can't recognize this area right here, we're fishing Almorada, the famous bridge where Mark and I did a show here about 10 years ago, the 10-year yeah. anniversary of Battle of the Bridge. And uh, we're going to show you that the technique that Jerry Rosen figured out still works today. So we're going to take these terrorized, put them in the current, let them swim, and hopefully stick some big fish. So let's see what happens. We have to wait for this guy to get through, but. Yeehaw. <laughs> should I say anything? <laughs> that is how you I'm on. Fish on. This real man. Back, 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 back. All right, hang on. Straighten out uh, to the right go of the Go to the bow. If you can, go to the bow. Then I'll, flip, then I'll turn it. Yeah. All right. We're good, we're good. Good job, Mr. Nichols! Yeehaw! How you doing? Awesome, going out. Hey, you gotta like it when they do that, brother. I love it. <laughs> I love it. Is it a good fish? Yeah, it feels respectable. 10 years later, and look, I say this at my seminars all the time, how we do this, 10 years later and it's still working well. Uh-oh. I'll get you on top of him. All right. And a baby. Oh, that's a good thing. Yeah. Hey, he's decent. 30, 40. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He'll do in a pinch, huh? Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> I tell you what, you know, it's amazing. We're sitting there and kind of you're starting to lose enthusiasm. Then you drift under that bridge and you stare at them. <laughs> and then you're kind of going, wait a minute, they're right there. I know they're there. Actually, this fish may be 50. Oh yeah, that's a good fish. Yeah, it is. That's a real good fish. Hey, you. <laughs> real good fish. You know what I like about the keys? Everything. You can catch them so many different ways here. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Truly. There's so many different ways you can catch a tarpon. A lot of ways to play the game here. Oh. I don't think he really realizes what's going on yet. Yeah, I was going to go, okay, I'm going to do the low left turn routine. And he said, wait a minute. Nice That's... smooth drag on this, sir. Thank you. They have, they have done, Wright McGill has done well with their saltwater equipment now. Yeah. How about that rod? Well. I like it a lot, actually. It's got a real nice bend to it. It's got good response. And... What color terrorized did you get him on? Uh, I got a 372, which is a green back over pearl with that red chin. It's one of my favorite colors in the Bait Buster and the Terrorize. I believe you've thrown a few of them yourself. I've thrown a couple now and then. Once or twice. I think I caught a fish on it one time. Yeah, about 10 years ago. Yeah, about 10 years ago. It right wasn't there. here though, was it? <laughs> Some other place. That was the brown dog. The brown dog. The brown dog still works well. Yes, it do. Sometimes something nondescript is the best thing at all, of all. You know, some of those little real brown drab flies and stuff catch yeah. some of the nicest fish. Look a little crabby. Yeah, exactly. The old terrorize mm -hmm. did her again. Yeah. Now what we're doing with that, we waited for the current to switch. We've been here a little bit all morning just waiting for that current to switch. And it started going along good. Boom, oh. turn them on, open the floodgates. Yeah. They all start looking that one direction at stuff coming through and waiting for stuff with an open mouth. It's one of those that went from 30 pounds to 40 pounds to 50 pounds. <laughs> Well, I like a whole lot better just turning off the spot lock instead of having to untie an anchor line. Oh, that's sweet. Really nice. Turn it off and go. She's letting some bubbles out. She's yeah. getting, hopefully getting ready soon. Hey, there he is. Yeah. He's oh, just, here he comes. Yeah. Is he going to jump? Is he going to jump? No, he's yeah, just going to just go. Yeah, I can't believe it's been 10 years since we've done this. I mean, we... <laughs> We haven't aged a bit. I know, we're identical. We're like twins, aren't we? Yeah. <laughs> I dye my hair gray so that I can look, you know, more mature and stately. 
Look at that terrorized right in the nose. Yeah, yeah. That one made me happy there. It's the first time I really got a look at it. Well, one thing good, you got the water coming out of the back country now. There's a little bit less oxygen in it because if it was coming onshore, we got an onshore wind right now and it just, these little chops, put a lot of oxygen in the water and make them fight really hard. But that's what, the yeah, water, the yeah, water. yeah, yeah, you're not pulling on this fish, are you? <laughs> uh -huh. Not this time. He's, he's, he's I can like if you want me to. He's got some oxygen, I think. Oh, there's a good pull on him. Yeah. You know, one of the last big questions I had last time we did this, Mark, was yeah. everybody asked me, hey, did y'all really catch those on the DOA terrorized hooks? <laughs> <laughs> and yes, we did. These are the right the ones you can find at Dick's on the end cap. Same, this same is, hooks. This is the hook. Been using Eagle Claw hooks in the terrorized since we started making them. Use Eagle Claw hooks in our shrimp since we started making them as well. Hey, I'll just be the boat driver today. Sounds good. Hey, I need a sandwich. You're a very good boat hey, driver. Hey, a sandwich. Remember, a sandwich. A sandwich. That was the famous line on last time we were doing this when I was fighting one forever. <laughs> yeah. Oh, shit. Oh, did he pop off? I don't know what happened. I felt the real two real strange jerks. I think he wrapped. Wrapped on his tail? Yeah. Oh well, we're gonna go back over and get set up. Hook another one. Let's go then. Well, it's not a hungry one up there. All right, what you want to do, just kind of keep looking down this edge right here. We're working down this sandbar, and the big ones are going to be hanging on the left side, and sometimes you'll get some slot fish hanging up on the right. But they hang in these little potholes, these little light spots, as we're coming up and down here. Good deal. Sounds and good I to me. I think, my, do me, throw me a cast out about 1130, about as far as you can get it up there. Good shot. There we go. Perfect. I'm going to put one out here just on the other side of you. Come and get it, baby. See what happens. Just let that pinfish sit on the bottom. There he is. Finally found a hungry one up there. Hey, you know what? That uh, talon works pretty good. Stop me right, uh, right in my tracks. <laughs> Forty pound redfish on the end of it. Uh. Well, that's an intro. Appreciate that, Skeet. Not a problem, there. Bear, let me get you a push pull for you. You want me to take over back here? Glad you had that yellow rod right there. <laughs> Well, welcome to this episode of Addictive Fishing. We're in Mesquite Lagoon, my home waters, and we got a surprise guest on the front of the boat. We got Ski Reese, 2000, up, 2009 Bassmaster Bass. Champion. Yeah. He was just hanging out with Ski up there at the uh, Bassmaster Classic a couple weeks ago. Said, hey, come on down and catch some redfish. Get away from them green things. Dude, that was just, that was <laughs> priceless right there. <laughs> That was that, that was worth the price of admission because you went on the ride. I got to watch it. I thought for sure. Could do, could do, could do, could do. I thought for sure that push pole was gonna stick someplace where I didn't want it to. How's that feeling right about now? It's feeling pretty good. I bet it is. Do I even bother well, throwing one out there? You can if you want, and have it just sit there and choke. I felt him bang it a couple of times. That's a long way down. <laughs> Four, four foot down can be a long way. I'm surprised. I'm it. surprised you're still walking right now. The reason I am, I've already bled once today. You already bled once? <laughs> That's the rule. You bleed once, you, uh, you're done for the day? Yeah, usually. Oh. Well, they're sitting a big stingray, folks. This is a big, big redfish on the end of this line. Dude, you got Shamu on there. Tell you, these things are like big pink manatees, man. Big fish, little rod! Look at that. 
This is my 7.9 too. That's awesome right there. There he goes. Look at that tail out there. Oh, did you see his tail? Yeah. He's a good fish. So what's the biggest redfish you ever seen? <laughs> biggest one I think I've ever seen alive is 18 pounds. I have a feeling that the thing there is a little bit bigger. <laughs> yeah, the problem with this is you're taking up fishing time right now. It's always a bad thing, isn't it? It is. <laughs> if it was me fighting, I don't have a problem with it, but... Well, this wind and stuff, you know. I thought the captain, you're supposed to put me on the all the work fish. back there. <laughs> Somebody had to do it. <laughs> Look at his pinfish, just hanging on the line right there. <laughs> you know what's wild is when you get a flock of pelicans. It's flying! Here. It's a flying fish! <laughs> you get a flock of pelicans in here and they see that fish hanging there. Dude, almost every time they'll try to grab it. See, he's just fighting this little fish, flying in the wind. That's all he's doing. It's a kite fish. <laughs> it is a kite fish. That's neat when you can come up and see him like that. Yeah! That's not a red fish, that's a shark. <laughs> a red shark. That's called a drag. <laughs> yeah, I have to get a little practice with that one. The bass fisherman in me is, uh, has put a little more drag on it. Well, although, I'm, I've, I've been pretty handy with the spinning reel. And <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> look at the head on that one, brother. I think he's about ready, brother. Dude, look they, just, they just roll over when they're ready here. Yeah, here. Get the... Let me get down here and build Auntie. Oh, do you lip them? Uh, uh, oh. These dudes. Oh. Yeah, he swallowed that one pretty good. Oh, oh keep that one. A... <laughs> well, there's your redfish, brother, from the Skeetle again. <laughs> you ready for one of these? Oh my god, that thing's huge! I can't wait to see your little rod bent over on that one. I'm scared now. That's gonna be good. I, I, that's that's ridiculous. Redfish from the Skeet Lagoon, y'all. Y'all stay tuned. We're gonna be right back. We're gonna put Skeet on one of these. Hopefully get him a hopefully get him a grown one. That's about a medium size. <laughs> that's not a redfish. It's a giant. Today's Rig It Right segment, I'm gonna show you what we're using out there today in all three of those trips. Now, Captain Greg, he was throwing one of his favorite lures and one of mine too. This happens to be the holographic DOA shrimp. And I tell you what, this is almost as good as the glow for me. Using 40 pound test Seaguar fluorocarbon leader and had 30 pound test fins on and we were using wind tamer today. Just, we didn't know if the wind was gonna kick up or what was gonna happen. Just a, a real simple snook rig, throwing the 7.6 flats blue absolutely getting the job out there done today. Now when we went down to the Keys, we didn't know exactly what we were gonna be tangling into. So we're throwing the eight footers, what I like to call the meat stick. And Mark was throwing, not the brown dog that we normally throw, but he was throwing this, I kinda like to call this one the Arkansas shad color. It's green on the back and pearl on the sides. And we were using a 3 8 ounce head just so we can get down there in that current real good. 50 pound test leader, because you really don't know how, what size fish you're gonna catch at the time. Could be a big one, could be a small one. Now when we went out with Skeet, and let me tell you, fishing with Skeet Reese, a bass guy out on the salt water, if we could ever get a nice calm day, it would be a catching day instead of a fishing day. Throw in live shrimp, and we're using laser sharp circle hooks. Best hooks out there on the market. Just if you're using live bait, a lot of times those fish are gonna swallow it way down and if you, they do swallow it way down in their stomach with a circle hook, it'll pull right out and every time catch them right in the corner of the mouth. And that's what got the job done on the redfish today was a circle hook. There's your bait check for today. Hope y'all enjoy today's bits and bites. Remember one thing though, every season starts right here at Dick's. Rig it right by Wright and Miguel. Well, aren't y'all glad we didn't leave all that footage laying all over the cutting room floor? That's some great fish and some great guys to fish with. If you ever get a chance to fish with any of them, I highly suggest going with them. I want to say thanks to Mark Nichols from DOA Lures for making some great baits as always. Skeet Reese, I hope to see you holding up a big trophy again at the Bassmasters. And uh, Greg Snyder down there in Stewart, keep catching them snook, buddy, and I hope I can come down and do it again with you soon. That's about it for today's show. One more thing. The website, we got a new section on there. It's called the Mogan Lounge. You can go on there and you can post your pictures. It's an interactive website, basically, where you can go and nothing but fishing, nothing but fishing people. Till next week, don't forget about the website and that new Mogan Lounge, addictivefishing.com. We'll see you. <laughs> oh, you. Check out more footage from this show by logging on to addictivefishing.com for outtakes and bloopers. Ooh.
for tarpon, actually. <laughs> Ah, we found a hungry one up there. Ooh.